As I was enjoying embroidery so much lately, I thought it was time to let you in on the fun. I've created a lovely beginner kit with a cute design to get you started. Later on in this tutorial, I will show you exactly how to make this floral design. But first, I want to take you through some of the embroidery basics. Hi guys, so let's dive right in. I want to take you through some of the basics that you need to know before you can even start with embroidery. Uh, first of all, we're going to use a embroidery hoop for this project to put our fabric in. So let me show you how to do that. Unscrew the closure. Now you have an inner ring where you put the fabric over it, like this. Make sure everything is in the middle. And then you can put the outer ring over it again, like that. And then you can start closing. Make sure the fabric stays taut. And while closing it, you can go around the entire ring. And to make sure it stays closed very well, I'm using these pliers, but you could also use a screwdriver and then you can make sure it's all really tight. Uh, so there you go, it's pretty simple. First, I want to explain some things about the floss that we're going to use. We're going to use DMC floss. There are many different brands, but I really like this one. It has really beautiful cotton. It has a nice shine to it and it comes in so many different colors. It feels like anything is possible. So you have a little skein like this with two wrappings around it and on the bottom wrapping there you find the number and this corresponds to the color of the embroidery floss. So what you do on the side where you find the number you find a tail and the tail is right here and while holding both wrappings in your hand you can slowly pull out this tail on this side and this way you can untangle or take out the floss without getting it all tangled up. What you could do is take all of it out and then wrap it around a bobbin like this or you can just work straight from the skein and that's both possible. What you want to do is take a piece of about the length of your uh, forearm, so something like this. And you don't want it to be too long because thread like this really uh, has the tendency to get tangled and we don't want it of course so we're going to take a piece of about this length. Embroidery floss contains of six separate threads. When you unravel it a little bit at the end you can clearly see six threads. You can embroider with all six strands uh, at once or you could take out one or two or three or whatever amount you would prefer. And for this project we're going to work with three strands so we're just going to split the floss in half but I want to show you how you could also take out one strand so just separate the floss a little bit until you have one singled out like this then hold uh, the floss between your thumb and index finger loosely not too tight and then you can slowly start pulling out one strand like this. It will start tangling up like this, but if you just go slowly and then you can just pull it apart and nothing happened. And now you can embroider very fine details with just one strand. But for this project, as I said, we're going to split it in half. And when you want to take out more than two threads, I uh, would rather split it. I think that works better. So let's pretend these are still six threads and I'm going to split them like this. Just pull them apart slowly because really it's going to get all tangled up in a knot. And what I like to do is move my finger so that I pull it close to the thread where I'm separating them. And if I move slowly like this, 
then things should be fine. And now I have three and in this case two. So we're going to embroider with three uh, strands for this project and I'm going to prepare my needle. So I have this really tiny needle and this one is especially for about three strands and it's very thin because it has to go uh, through the fabric easily. And what I do is I take one end and I make a knot and the other side is going to go inside this really tiny tiny eye. So we want all the strands to go together and you could do that by licking it or wetting your fingers and making it wet or you can have like a little pot of water and dabble it in there whatever you prefer. I make sure that I have a small output right here make sure it's flat and then I can thread my needle like that I have the knot on the end. I like to work with knots on the end you could also not make a knot with some stitches you can make sure it's secured but I like making knots it's on the back and it's it's fairly neat and I'm happy with it so and there you go now your thread is prepared for embroidery first I want to show you how to prepare the pattern so what I did is this is the pattern for the project that we're going to work on and I cut it out and now I'm going to take some simple masking tape and put some pieces on the back of it. Just some small pieces. And there you go. So I made a little dot on the top. This is going to be the top of the piece. So that's going to be where the closure is. Um, so make sure that these are aligned and then you can just put the drawing, the pattern inside like this, push it down and now you can use the tape to secure it in place for just a little bit. So in this case I'm working with fabric which is called cheesecloth. It's a cotton fabric with a tight weave but it's still a little bit see-through and that's why you can see the pattern coming through when you prepare it like this. So now I take a pencil and I'm just going to start drawing on top of the fabric. Just follow the lines of the drawing beneath and it's really simple. You have to make sure that you copy it quite exact because this pencil is not going anywhere. We're going to embroider over the pencil. In that case you don't have to worry about uh, what kind of pen you're using. Just make sure that you draw it very neatly. But that's the way I'm going to copy the entire pattern. But first I want to show you the stitches that we're going to use. So we're going to use two different stitches for this pattern. We are going to use the satin stitch and the French knot. They are both not very complicated, but you just have to know how to do it. The simplest one is the satin stitch, which I'll show you first. So let me draw out uh, two lines. And this is where I want the satin stitch to go. So I start from the back and I'm going to go up just below the pencil line like this. And then I'm going to pull it up all the way until I reach the knot on the back. And this prevents the thread from coming out. And the satin stitch is just simply uh, going from one side of the area all the way to the next side. It could even be stitches this long, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go exactly just over the pencil line because I want to cover up the pencil line. I can go under or on it, just slightly over it. And then pull it all the way down like this. What I could do is now move my way back to the bottom and come up right next to it and then just make another stitch like this uh, or I could come up on the same side as I just went in 
right here next to it and go down on the other side so again I just went down here and now I'm coming up on the same side just a little bit to the right of it like this and just go in right here and the difference is mainly on the back so with the first stitch I made this whole stitch on the back as well and to me that's uh, that seems very wasteful and I don't really like that but if I don't do that and I get these really tiny stitches on both sides all the way through and I hardly waste any thread so I prefer doing it that way you can choose whatever you prefer uh, you have enough floss uh, in one skein to finish the entire kit either way so don't worry about it but I would recommend going in and out on the same side and so that's basically the set and stitch later on if I work on the project I will show you how I make the set and stitch in these uh, leaves so let me uh, now show you how to make a French knot uh, the French knot is just a simple little rose like knot so we come up from the back so we wrap the floss around the needle twice like this so you now have two wrappings right here and then you go back with the needle and you go not in the same hole but just next to it like this and what you want to do now is those wrappings are here you want to take make it a little bit tighter maybe and you want to pull them down not too tight if you make it tight the french knot will be very small but if you just loosely put them bring them down and then push the needle in and pull all the way through what happens is this floss is going to clasp those two wrappings and make sure they stay in place like this and now you have a French knot. So let me show it once more. You go in through the back. You can lay your hoop down if you like. Got the end here. You wrap the needle twice. One time, two times. You put the needle tip back where you came from, but not in the exact same space, just a little bit next to it. And that's where you're gonna go in then you want those wrappings to go down all the way until they touch the fabric don't make them too tight I'll show you if you make them really tight so as tight as I can and now I'm going to pull the needle down it's hard for me to even go through here and then you get this really tiny French knot it's it's still a French knot maybe it's something you would like but I prefer them to be a little bit bigger I also chose to do these with the three threads but you could also maybe make them with all six strands and then you will get a bigger knot as well it's it's a preference so let me show you once more a little bit more quickly so we go out we wrap it around the needle twice we go in Pull those wrappings down, make sure they stay there. You could hold them with your thumb if you like, and then just pull it all down. And there you go. But also, I will show you later on how to use them in the product. Uh, let me also quickly show you how to tie off the thread on the back when you want to change thread or you're finished with an area. What you do is you make a knot like this and when you've made the loop you can put the needle inside the loop and then place it where you want the knot to be so at the end where the thread came out like this and this way the knot will move all the way as close to the cloth as possible and then you can pull out the needle so just one knot is enough 
cut it off really close to the edge. And there you go, that's all you'll see. So you have a little knot from the beginning and a little knot from the end. And those are the two different stitches that we're going to make and I think we're ready to go. So guys, for this uh, particular design I made a kit and with the kit you will get all four colors of the DMC floss. You will get a lovely uh, embroidery hoop which you see here with the brass closure made in the UK. You get a high quality embroidery needle, some cloth which I call cheesecloth in the Netherlands, cast look. <laughs> and of course the pattern, and then you can get started uh, yourself. So you can head over to my shop on Etsy and there you can find the kit and then you can get going. Well, now let's start with the actual project. As you can see, I've already started with most of the flowers and I've got some middle parts to finish still and I left these two flowers so that I can show you exactly how I make them. As you can see for this project I've chosen to make the satin stitch in this direction rather than going out. That's because I wanted this to have a contemporary feel to it and have a little bit of a different character than the pieces that you usually see. I really love the other pieces as well but I wanted this one to be a bit different so that's why. Let me show you how I made this petal. I have this petal right here and then I imagine a X is going from the stem to the outside of the petal and then I imagine there to be a perpendicular line and I see where this line touches the petal. So I hope I'm not making this too complicated. But to make this a little bit simpler, just take the most outside horizontal line that you can make on this surface area. Prepared my needle with the uh, floss from the ochre color and I've made a little knot on the outside. And now I'm going to start from the back and push it up. This is approximately where I think the most outside horizontal line would be. So I pull it as far as I can go, the knot will stop it on the back. And then I make a horizontal line compared to this axis, so perpendicular to that one. And I push it back in. And pull it all the way through. So that's my first stitch. Don't pull too hard on this side, right next to the pencil. And then moving over to the other side, over the pencil line so that it will be covered. Right there. And then pull it through. So don't go too far away, too far out, just neatly together so that you create a nice curve on the edge of the petal. I've now come to the last uh, part. Um, I still want to fill up just this tiny little area. Um, but I wanted to show you that we're going to put some French knots inside here. So you don't have to be too careful with this circle shape. So I'm coming up here. 
I'm just going to go across once more. And then I'm going to come up somewhere around here in the middle. Just want to make sure this is filled up here. There you go. You know what? I think this is fine. And we're going to do the other parts as well. I'm just going to start with the same thread. Imagine the axis. And just give me a tiny stitch here like this. So some things that could happen is that you come up in the exact same hole as where you left off and then you just pick up your stitch again because you pull it out. Well then you just make it again, that's no problem. And you could have also made a stitch that you don't really like, maybe it's too far out, then you can just take out the stitch. So let me show you. Put it in. I take out my needle and then I can just pick up the stitch. Make sure you have all three threads and just pull it out. And then you have to put your needle back on the floss. You always have to be careful that you don't get the floss tangled. So don't um, pull it in too fast. Just take your time and that will make sure it doesn't get tangled but it, it it's not bulletproof it will get tangled sometimes and then you just have to wing it see where the knot is is it on the back is it on the front and sometimes you even have to cut it loose unfortunately and then make sure you have the tails on the back and yeah sometimes you can't really even secure it anymore but that shouldn't be too big of a problem embroidery is quite forgiving that way um, so i'm going to continue making these petals and this one in red and then I'm going to show you how to make the French knot. I've now finished all the satin stitches and I'm going to make the French knot. Some of them I've made already but I've got a few more to go. Uh, for this particular flower I've used a different color as you can see and so I'm going to make the French knots in the ochre color. And let me just show you. I'm coming up from the back and I'm coming up close to the edge, not touching the edge of this particular area. So I'm coming up all the way. So now, as I've shown you, I'm going to wrap my needle twice, go back in approximately the same place as I came out of, pull the stitches down while holding them, pull the needle down slowly and surely and there you go, your first French knot. So now I'm coming up next to it, not touching it, just look at the size of the knot and make sure the other one comes next to it. They can overlap a bit, that's fine but don't make them too close together. Wrap twice, go in approximately the same place, pull the wrappings down, hold them down, and then pull the needle down, and there you go. So for each flower head, there is a different a surface available. So this one is quite small and this one is quite big. So for this particular flower you need more French knots to fill it all up. It 
depends on how you place them exactly, I guess. And it doesn't really matter as long as you fill up the area and it looks nice and you are happy with it. Once you get the hang of these particular stitches, you will find that they will go faster, but as all things, they need a little bit of practice. So the other ones I will fill up with the light uh, salmon color and then I'm finished. So I'll see you when that happens. And there you go guys, I finished it and I'm really loving it. The colors are so nice together and it's such a cute pattern. So what I'm going to do now is finish the back. So on the back it looks like this, as you can see. Uh, I've got some of those knots on the back and you can see some of the stitches, but it's really quite clean. So what I'm going to do is cut off fabric here, like this, and I leave about an inch or two to three centimeters as an edge. That doesn't have to be exact. So now I've prepared my needle with about the length of two forearms, so twice my forearm, and I'm going to start uh, from the back close to the edge, like this, so close to the edge here, and then leave some space here, and coming up, and on the back I'm going to leave a tail like this. So now I'm going to stitch it and I'm going to stitch like this, so close to the edge but not too close and then make stitches about this length, it's about a centimeter and then just pull it through and I'm going to go all the way around like that, keeping about the same distance from the edge of the fabric. Putting it in and coming back up like that and then just pull it all the way through slowly so that it doesn't get tangled. So this is the tail from the back and then you get something like this. So I'm going to go all the way around. So now at the end, so this is the last stitch right here, I'm going to go in and then finish at the back and then we've got two tails right here. So now what we can do is start pulling on these tails and what happens is that you will start pulling it all together nicely and you get something like this and what you can do with those two tails is just knot them together as tight as you like, like that, you can cut off a little tail and that's how I finished this piece. There are different ways to finish the back, so this is one of them. You could also just cut it a little bit smaller and then glue it to the back. You could also put a piece of cloth right here to hide these stitches, but I actually kind of like that you can see how it's made. And then that's it guys. Mm -hmm.